And welcome back again to Good Morning Kenya. Many thanks for staying with us. We appreciate you for choosing Good Morning Kenya. We continue with our segment, Women at the Forefront, talking about a different story altogether. And we want to touch on safety of children. Yes, my guest this morning is Alice uh, Mwende Kanini. She is the founder of Moms Love Children's Home, which is located in uh, Soweto. That's in Embakasi. True. Before you go to the whole idea of safety, the paperwork that it entails to open a children's home, because again, there's been a lot of stories surrounding the safety of children True. in children's home. Let's start from your story. You began this home. You take in about children aged between four and 20, toddler years. When did you start? How has it been? What prompted you? Well, I started in 2014. Mm -hmm mid 2014 and it has been a milestone up to date yeah. i started with a cbo certificate mm -hmm. because we need to bind with the government law you cannot stay with someone's life or someone's child without the government authority yeah. so when i made it sister and a cbo for the first and the start and from there so I want you to speak out uh, to skia. Au skia sauti. Tunataka tusikie sauti yako oh. be audible. Ni homa tu ni imenishika kidogo sijui umetoka hapa. But tutakusikia just try. Uh, yes. So when I started 2014 there nilianza na one child <laughs> na nikianza na one child already had already registered under CBO. That was in 2014. 2014 mid. <laughs> up to date. Na I started with one child. No, after I got your certificate, I had to take it back to the chief's office, the Kapeleka police station, Kapeleka children's department, mm -hmm. so that they can know I'm there. Mm -hmm. And from there, they started referring kids. They came for inspection. Though it was down, I was down. We moved together. They could cancel. They could tell me do this, do correction. We are living standard. And I found myself in it so up to date. So it's actually an entire process. Yes. We'll get into that in a bit because I mean that is also part of what is forming the basis of our conversation, safety of children in mm. this children's home. Mm. But let's go back to your motivation. Mm. Yes, you began in 2014. I mean, it's not easy to live with children who are not your own. But it's not easy. Mm. And uh, for one, thank God, he transforms you. He gives you that tolerance, patience, love. You become selfless. Because if you don't know God and you don't have those things, just stop it. Yeah. So whenever, for me, whenever I see a child, even if it's not mine, I see a soul. And when I see a living soul, I see God. Mm -hmm. I see a life. Because I won't even allow myself or, or, or I won't allow like it to be in a situation where I'm not comfortable. If it's not good for me, what about that child? Mm -hmm. Yes, so you become selfless, you, come lo you become loving, protective, you give care, you give everything. Mm -hmm. And that is me, I give everything to them. Mm -hmm. All right, there's something that you're still not telling us. Mm -hmm. I want to get that motivation because again, over time, children's homes have been sprouting up. Yes. And good people will just tell you, I, I, I can't stand seeing children on the streets. Or some would say, uh, I never had a child of my own. So it feels like I want to take care of children, I have the love of children. For you, what was it exactly? I think it's my humble background. Okay. Uh, where I, I was brought up from a very vulnerable area, mm. our location, Soweto. By then it was totally Kijiji. It was a ghetto. Mm -hmm. where you can see poverty and you start seeing poverty by the living standard of people the feeding children are malnourished the clothing you can see this is a total poverty and being the last born from my mama's family that's where I started to have that passion whatever my mom could afford to put in the table that is a meal a breakfast the little I have especially bread our days bread was something precious 
you can go and buy you some kate from a shop mm -hmm. when you pass by. And we never used to have paper bags that you hide what you're carrying. Mm -mm. Life has changed. You could just go and buy you some kate on a fungana gazeti or they cover with a piece of paper ju gazeti. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows this is a bread. Every child can see this is a bread. As you enter in your doorstep, they are there with you. Mm -hmm. You cannot push them away, you cannot chase them away. So you just pinch a bit, a bit, a bit. I think that's where I started having that passion mm -hmm. of loving and sharing with them mm -hmm. due to the background of where I came from. Okay, mm. All right, makes a lot of sense. Mm. All right, let's go to picking of these children. Yes, it's between the ages of 4 to 20, but how do you go about picking the children? Because again, even as we speak, much as you have a children's home, much as there are various other children's homes, we still have children on the streets, True. sleeping and living on the streets. Very much. So what informs the ones that you pick? For us, actually, we don't pick. Okay. They're being referred, and that is why you need to have uh, paper, your papers documentation paper to the chief, mm. to the police around you, and to the children's department. Mm. They're the ones who refer them to you. Oh, okay. So we don't have mandate of going and pick, because if it's going and pick, mm. I think we cannot pick, because we always be looking for the best child. You get the point? Mm -hmm. Now they refer that child to you. Mm. Sometimes even they refer the disabled child, or a, or, a, or of a child of a different situation. Mm -hmm. It's you to choose what you feel is comfortable with you. So for me, I came to realize I'm comfortable with abandoned kids and orphans. Mm -hmm. And some are also HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And also I take care of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're comfortable with abandoned kids and mm -hmm. orphans. Mm -hmm. Those abandoned kids, have you ever had a situation or a scenario where someone comes and claim their children? To be sincere, I've never had. Okay. If, because the of children's department, they have all the records, they are there. Suppose you have a lost child, mm -hmm. they'll come and inquire from your files. Nobody has claimed them. So you just be with them. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. How does your program look like? I mean, you have these kids from as young as four and they go to school, primary, secondary, and even some of them go to college because you take them up until 20 years. Mm. How does that program look like in terms of even how you empower these children? It's not easy. Okay. Uh, because mo most of my kids are like uh, now from 20, 20, 20, 14, 15 there. Okay. It's when I started getting those very young infants. I have even day one kids, mm. months of kids, so you'll be with them, take them to the hospital, take care of them when the time to go to school. You need to enroll them. They cannot be there mm -hmm. at home. What is the purpose? If you cannot provide to them, they need to have education. They need to have good health, clothing. So you start from step door, I mean from step one. If they're in that age of going to school, take them to school. Let them be assessed. If they have outgrown, yeah. the teachers are the ones to see this child can be in this grade or this child can be in this grade if they are a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Now I have uh, even that secondary children, no, not secondary, university children. A child, that girl came when she was in class eight. Mm -hmm. When she did her eight, I took her from one to from four out of well wishes. Mm -hmm. There are those people who could stand with her through school fees till from four. She did it well, she had a B minus. Mm. From there, she wanted to do nothing. Then somebody offered to give her a scholarship of Germany. So she's doing her language, mm -hmm. and we're still struggling to see she'll meet her ends properly. You've said that you even have kids from day one. Mm. That means that this you know, that probably were just born yesterday or two days ago and you mm. have them. Mm. How do you take care of such children, knowing fully well that these are kids who really need to be... And exactly, need. and they need their mom, you know, as much as they can. You gain strength. That child is How do you feed them? We give them none milk. None. Mm -hmm. That is tinned milk. You give them everything when it's time for winning, you see them, they're in that stage, you move with them bit by bit till they outgrow. 
Wow. Mm. I mean, this clearly is not for everyone. Even now, I'm expectant. That is what I'm telling people because <laughs> our space has expanded. There's somebody who has volunteered. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have already constructed a bigger space for us. Mm. So the capacity there, it's around 60 kids. But I won't take them up to 60. I'll be enrolling bit by bit. Mm -hmm. We move on. Mm -hmm. mm. Enrolling bit by bit as you move on. Yes. So as you say enrolling bit by bit as you move on, clearly it means that the child that you took when they were age four or even day one or even age five, when they get to 20, they have to look for... Way out. Way out. And way so out is by as are their academic results maybe he didn't do well in form four suppose it was your child mm. you cannot let your child just to move on look for a course do something better to empower this person when he or she goes out won't be idle won't go back to be a vulnerable adult and being vulnerable adult they'll end up being in streets or uncaring mm. parents and responsible parents mm. So it's you and your people and whatever you do, you mentor. Mm -hmm. Knowing that still they need you and you need them. Mm -hmm. I want to see my fruits, work of my hands, my sweat, the hunger you bring for us. I want to see it doing better. And that is by seeing that child goes well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it means that you also have a mentorship program? Yeah, there's somebody, actually there's a lady who volunteered to be with us, who comes every Sunday to mentor with them, to counsel them, mm -hmm. to make them realize their, especially these teenage girls and boys. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's be very practical, Alice. You say that perhaps at the age of 20, someone who's completed high school, obviously, is perhaps in a program of, of going to college or even <coughs> campus. Mm. They're probably done with college. And we obviously know how difficult it is to get a job. I mean, just look for, a, I mean, look at a um, normal kind of home setup. Most children or a good number of them, even after their college or university, still end up staying with their parents because they didn't get jobs or they don't have jobs. Now, this is you. You still need to enroll other, more other children. What happens to this person who you've empowered to the match of your capacity still don't, doesn't have a job? Do you allow them to just go fend for themselves or they still stay inside the home because you're here to, to support these children? The rule number one, I tell you, the, the condition and the rule number one of our children's home, it's uh, from day one to 18 years. That's the standard. Yeah, that's the standard. But also you as a mother, you need also to empower them. Apart from what they are learning, okay. and what they are uh, going to school to get the education, give them <coughs> skills, yeah. their opportunities. Don't let them just be there. At, from school, you sit down, you don't want to have a broader thinking. Yeah. Make them understand. Well, if this door closes, there's another one. So even it's us parents, we need to empower our kids. And if you want to do masters, or you want to do doctor, whatever courses or jobs, mm -hmm. by the time it reach there, do something else that's better. Mm -hmm. Incoming thing. You can do also chef. Mm -hmm. You can do other online businesses. Mm -hmm. Make the, that person understand. There are so many opportunities mm -hmm. and skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is also part of what you're trying to do, aside from just taking care of these kids and children, mm -hmm. is also trying to empower them with what yeah. school might not give them. Yes. All right, earlier on we talked about a situation whereby a parent might want to come and pick their kids and you've said you've never had such kind of a situation. Sure. Again, just like in a normal kind of family setup, we've had those, those kids whereby they would say, at age 17 or even 15 or even 14, I feel like I want to go. I want to leave. Does that also happen in your children's home? And if so, how do you deal with what I would call maybe those difficult kind of children? The challenges. Yes. I tell you what you normally do. I've never faced such a situation because for mine, I won't say it's a, a bit exceptional, but also we can see, we share even with others. When a child starts to be, maybe wants to work out mm. as a parent, even if it is your child, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Why are you leaving? You need to know what is the problem with this child. Yeah. You need to take your time. Talk to the child. Maybe there's a harassment. Maybe there's a peer pressure because of adolescence. Even it's better you get a counselor mm -hmm. who will come and talk to this child. If the child still insists, we feel it's better. You go back to the authorities. You tell them what is happening. 
they'll chip in, mm. they'll show you a way out. Mm -hmm. mm, but yeah. it's not fair. Mm -hmm. Even as a human being, it's not fair. Okay. Just pass it talk when, mm -hmm. wapi. Mm -hmm. So you, that's a zero the grazing. Caregiver. That is the zero grazing. Why were you with the child from the word go? Mm -hmm. mm, you need to know what is the reason as to why this child wants to go. Not all of them are 100% yeah. comfortable in being in home. Mm -hmm. Maybe this child has some other things. Give an ear to that child. Make him understand. Or you make, let him make you understand. If situations come, stuff, involve the government, mm -hmm. the authorities. Mm -hmm. They'll help you. Yeah. Mm. You go back to authorities. Mm. So this is why it is important not to just go by picking these kids from the streets or anywhere else, but take them from the relevant authorities. Yes, mm. the legal way. Okay, mm. let's now get into that. What is the process of opening a children's home? We've, see, we, we've been seeing, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of them are shrooming up, coming up very quickly. And the whole idea of most of them would say, I just do not want to see kids on the street. But from we understand that there's a process of mm. picking those kids, as you've mentioned. So obviously there's also a process of before you get that home. How does it look like when it comes to government licenses, certificates, and all of that? It's an easy thing because there's also that in, uh, inspection. You need to involve the government because they are their security. Uh, the government is our security mm -hmm. in case of death, in case of sickness, in case of uh, child trafficking. To be on the safe side, mm -hmm. in involve the government among the right authorities. Yes. They'll chip in and they're friendly, you'll move on well. Mm -hmm. So long as you bind with the terms and the conditions mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do those terms and conditions look like? Again, just for the benefit of our viewers who might be perhaps watching and someone is feeling, I'd also want to get in such kind of an initiative. They're not all that easy. You must be having a space, not to keep a child and then start starving. Mm -hmm. There are those things that, he, is this child will be comfortable? Will you be able to feed this child properly? Mm -hmm. Even if it's not a uh, fully well-balanced diet, mm -hmm. will this child be co comfortable with you? Are you going to be friendly with the child? The environment with the, um, around you, we check on so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm. And the state also gets to do inspections. Mm. After what period? And when they come, what exactly are they looking at? I tell you, they normally, they are, they are, sometimes they come after every six months. They must come and see, and we give monthly reports, mm -hmm. returns. We call that is it mandatory. returns. Yeah, to the district children's officer. Mm -hmm. Mom's love. This is my number, capacity, everything, mm -hmm. every month. When they come for inspection, they check on beddings. Are they fine for the kids? Are you clean? Are the kids on the safe side? for avoiding torture, food stuff, are they going to school health wise? Mm -hmm. Do you really taking advantage of the kids or are you doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. Where there's wrong where you're doing wrong they'll correct you. Mm -hmm. And if you're ready to be corrected everything will be smooth. Mm. Mm. Okay, makes sense. Mm. Talking about taking advantage, about two years ago there was a story done by a local station here in the country. It was dubbed Praying Missionaries, mm. whereby these missionaries were actually sex offenders in their country. But when they came to Kenya, they were given a work permit. And by giving a work permit, you're being allowed to actually do any kind of work. So they went ahead and opened a children's home. Later on, after some months, it actually was realized that they ended so up nice. violating sexually number of girls in that particular children's home I mean just going by what you're telling us clearly taking care of children who are not your own needs to take a lot of, of your heart. time a lot of your time a lot of your heart it just needs to you've given yourself to these children that you do not know but this is one story which was done by a local media house well clearly there are various other stories of children being violated and most especially sexually when you look at that from your perspective as someone who gets to run a children's home what do you say about that what is your general feeling your general thought this ministry has a uh, my industry it's a bit challenging mm. there are those people with evil motive and those people who are doing it 
with good motive. Okay. For me, I heard about it. Yeah. But then it was like a shock. Bang, it was how? a very big story then. Yeah, even as we were mixed up, even as we were started getting scrutinized, are you doing the right things? Okay. So mostly the management determines a lot. Mm. Who is your manager? Who is your um, house mother? Who's taking care of the kids? Even you yourself, what kind of a person are you? Okay. Are you really fully occupied or you are just there for the sake? So that determines a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you check on those points, kids might be on the safe side or the, according to you. Mm -hmm. You the manager or the director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it determines. But it was very awful. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for the kids, thinking they have a, a savior, the savior ended up being out, a devil to them. Mm -hmm. It's a pity, mm -hmm. and it was a pity, and thank God the government acted on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you look at such kind of stories, then that is why we need regulations. What more do you think can be done by government or, rev or relevant stakeholders? Because like I mentioned, that was one story that came out. We have various others that don't even get to get to the public eye. What I can, uh, for the safe side of the kids, yes. we need more civilians. Let the government be with us. We move with the government mostly. And also we, the directors, mm. we should look on our management, mm. especially the staffs, the house mothers. Are they loving? And we need to be close to the kids because I'm their mother. Mm. And I believe a mother, when you have a mother, you feel you're safe. So. I should be friendly to this child mm -hmm. to know more about mm -hmm. it, to be listening to the child, to be caring and dedicating most of the time there. Mm -hmm. Like for me now, I sleep with them, I live with them. Where that I is call, also your home. Yeah, where I call my home, it's where I have them. My kids are outgrown, so I deal with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then does it mean that there's a form of training, perhaps for what you call the mothers, the staff, or those that mm -hmm. deal with the children? Because I want to imagine, I do not, understand how someone in their right sense of mind can decide to pick several children but then again go ahead and defile them unless is something insane. is wrong with you that is insane then also always you should be the security the voice of this child the advocate of this child yes. don't trust everybody who comes to your home mm. especially this issue of that i'm a volunteer i need an accommodation Mama, we look for accommodation for this person. No, come and volunteer and go. Mm. Go and sleep where you're going to sleep and come and do volunteer. Mm -hmm. For me, I've never ever accommodated a volunteer in my home. Mm -hmm. And if it's a volunteer, which section? You want to come and do washing. Okay, this is what we do. We do the washing clearly, openly, seeing everything. Mm -hmm. If it is in education, we sit somewhere, you tell us what you want to train us. But I've never given that full freedom mm -hmm. at the, i can leave friends or my volunteers with my kids and most of the volunteers are youths mm -hmm. maybe university students church youths you get the point yes if our visitors we do the cooking we are all over together with them all for the protection of these children yes i felt that was very important for us to talk about because mm -hmm. anytime there's a story or conversation about children's homes, mm. it never misses. Mm. And remember these are vulnerable children who mm. they rely on you. They don't have like biological parents per se they because some are you. actually orphaned. Mm. Yeah, so lastly as you bring this conversation to a close, I wouldn't want us to finish that talking about the issue of funding. Tell us a bit about that. About the funding, somebody might decide today I'm going to buy a lunch for you. That person will buy through M-Pesa. There are those who bring food the real food stuffs. So we depend on well wishes actually mm -hmm. in funding. I don't have a permanent person who will be doing this and that, no. You might decide today I'm going to buy this for the kids or flour and maybe I have the flour in my store. So instead of buying flour, I'll balance the equation. I'll take the money to the most needy place. Mm -hmm. Maybe paying staffs. Also those people have their needs. Yes. They have their families, they need to do their own things. Mm -hmm. So also you need to see how you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said, lastly, what next for mom's children? And I have also street family. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with street family. 
and uh, this is the fourth month. Mm. I give them lunch mm. every day. Even now, the people in the ground who are preparing lunch for them. And whatever they eat is whatever we eat. Mm -hmm. So we cook one meal. Okay. For us and the kids mm. and the street families, mm -hmm. we eat together and I can see my happiness is to see the society smiling. Okay. The uh, needy smiling okay. society. <laughs> That's a good place to end it. Your happiness is to see the society and the needy smiling. Mm. I mean, that's why we live in it. It's all sure. for mm. benefiting, empowering, growing others who do not have the capacity to do so. Mm. Thank you so much, Alice, for your time. Thank you, too. All right. So I have been speaking to Alice Mwende Kanini, founder of Moms Love Children's Home, talking to us about her initiative, what brought her into this, and what she's set to do for most of these vulnerable children most especially those living in the streets and that is where we bring this conversation to a close and the entire show thank you so much for watching till tomorrow i'm doreen arangi okello good morning <laughs>